I'm Brian O'Hagan. I'm growth lead at Sober, the global fantasy football game. Hi, I'm John S. Lee. I'm head of blockchain programs at Shopify. Hi, uh, I'm Danny, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Makerspace. An NFT stands for non-fungible token. For me, what is an NFT is really about uh, unlocking the act of collecting from a digital perspective. I think NFTs are just like a cryptographic file wrapper that can track and maintain both the ownership and transactions in a permanent manner. The way I think about it is I, I compare NFTs to the iPhone for the creative industry. Um, it's, it's a new platform. It's a new form factor in, such, in, 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 in some senses that's allowing creatives to finally express themselves um, you know, create things that they always wanted to, but didn't have a sustainable path to continue to create and support. And, and I think that's, that's probably the biggest thing, biggest change, biggest movement that the NF, that NFT technology is enabling right now. I think there's a lot happening, but if I was to kind of break it down into, a, uh, you know, three different areas, I think. Um, I think first off is the technology around creating NFTs to buying NFTs to storing, viewing that has um, evolved significantly. Um, and, you know, if you kind of look back, it was very difficult to do these things. And so that's um, a major unlock. The second thing is around creativity. There's, there's been a tremendous amount of creatives entering the NFT space. And so with that, you're seeing um, a lot of these creatives push the boundaries in areas like art, music, entertainment, communities. And with, with that creativity, it's, it's really driving a lot of excitement. With each of these creators that are coming in, they're driving significant amount of community activity, um, which is then building these, these um, opportunities for people to engage with NFTs in, in unique ways. And then, and then sort of all these things sort of come together in a bit of a flywheel. When uh, a particular NFT from a, a, a known creator um, is, is highly sought after, um, sometimes you see these massive auctions happen. So like one thing that um, I'm particularly very familiar with um, and, and um, what we saw earlier this year was this Beeple sale um, that happened for $69 million at, at Christie's uh, auction house and in partnership with Maker's Place. And things like that are happening on a frequent basis. The NBA launched NBA Top Shot with Dapper Labs um, earlier uh, last year, or late last year, rather. And uh, that created an interesting interest by a lot of NBA teams that wanted to launch NFTs. So we had a, we had a direct introduction to the Bulls who were interested in doing this launch, where their legacy of having uh, the number of championship rings that they have to actually offer the opportunity for the fans to own a version of the championship ring and purchase it as a digital good. The majority of the Chicago Bulls audience are not crypto people. They are the general public who are looking for, uh, for ease of access and, and all of the things they expect from a gen general uh, e-commerce transaction. Shopify is really good at conducting e-commerce. And so one of the things we did is we actually collaborated with a company that uh, builds on the Flow blockchain created by, that's been created by Dapper Labs to allow for a mint event to occur without requiring the merchant to deploy a smart contract themselves. So we've obfuscated the need for blockchain knowledge to deploy a smart contract and to mint an NFT and, and use the expertise of our third-party minting partner to do so while allowing the merchant, in this case, the bulls, to market directly using existing marketing and sales uh, channels that they have to target their audience. I mean, it's been a massive success. Every day other than the first day, every NFT sold out in under a minute. And it was a massive success. They've since launched a secondary marketplace that allows people to trade things peer to peer. Our approach was the right one for the Bulls and the Bulls audience in that there was no need for anybody involved in that particular e-commerce transaction to learn cryptocurrency or learn blockchain technology to accomplish their intended goal.
When you look at NFTs, there's two pillars right now. There's the art aspect and the collectible aspect. And to be fully honest, I really love arts and I really love artists, but I don't really fully get it in terms of valuation and how to value that. So for me, this is a bit more esoteric, uh, but I find it very exciting, especially for artists and creators. However, on the other end, there's the gaming aspect. And I think that for games, it is just revolutionary technology, especially for gamers. Um, and so I'm really bullish because I do truly believe that all the AAA gaming studios in the next two to three years will release games with NFTs within these games and games where the NFT will be playable in not only in one of their games, but in multiple of their games. So if you look at Ubisoft, um, they have Assassin's Creed, they have other AAA games and imagine owning an NFT that you won in Assassin's Creed that you would be able to use in under one of their games. Um, and I truly believe that we will be going towards that and that will unlock a lot of value for gamers, for game studios, for indie game studios and create new economic opportunities for, for, for the internet in general. I couldn't tell you the number of times an artist reaches out to us on Makerspace and says, hey, I, um, I'm able, I, I was able to quit my job and, and be a 100% dedicated digital artist because of NFTs. Um, I was able to pay off my home because of NFTs. And, and this is a real movement that's happening where finally the innovators and, and the creatives that are going to push the boundaries are able to do this full time. And, and that's why I'm super bullish. It's, it's because the people that are going to change the world finally have a, a sustainable future. And, and and NFTs is is, are, is enabling that, and you're going to see so much innovation over the next years because of that. Education. I still think that a lot of people see NFTs as a meme, um, as something funny, as something a bit strange, um, and they don't get it because it is strange to think that. Uh, an image of a football player or an image of a piece of art uh, could be worth 100k. Um, so I think a lot of people need to be educated uh, on NFTs. I think the next 12 months are going to be critical um, in that there are, let's be perfectly honest, not all NFT launches has been successful in the space. There has been some NFT launches that has not done very well and that is actually what some would classify as failures where items did not sell out and um, items are stagnating in people's repositories and the reality is that there needs to be a push for an expansion of the total audience that would want to participate in the nft space and i think like a way to do that is really to focus on mass adoption and to provide a means for people to on-ramp into the NFT space without requiring them to either spend a lot of money, which currently a lot of NFTs in terms of pricing are really outsized in terms of physical good comparables, and also have a very simple way for somebody to create a wallet and, and have an NFT kind of be dropped into that wallet that they've created. The favorite NFT I own is my Diego Maradona card. Uh, why? Because NFTs are your digital identity. And in Sora's case, NFTs are your sports and football's digital identity. So imagine someone checking out my account. Um, they'll see that I own a Diego Maradona card. And actually, this card doesn't serve any utility because he's dead. And so he's not playable um, in, in, in the fancy game. But he's a legend of the game. Uh, he's one of the best footballers uh, that's ever played on earth. And um, yeah, he represents something for any football fan that loves South American football. So I bought his card and it has emotional value for, for me. Obviously, um, I'm a little biased. So I'm a big fan of digital art in the form of NFTs. And so my favorite NFT is, um, is digital art, is in the form of digital art. I think ultimately, um, I'm a big fan of artworks that move me and give me a, a different perspective, a new perspective. And um, there's one um, by Frenetic Void. The reason why I'm a huge fan of this particular piece um, is because, you know, Frenetic is someone who really pushed the boundaries in, um, in challenging how you 
how you sort of think about things. And, and I think a lot of the digital artworks that I, I collect tend to um, fall in that sort of category that, that um, you know, speaks to me and, and has that deeper meaning. My favorite is still my first. And I have to say that I do appreciate what the team at Dapper Lab did in X and Zen when they launched CryptoKitties in 2017. And it still is the foundation upon which every other NFTs have been built. CryptoPunks was the first, and I will not argue with that. But I think that the ability to coalesce into a standard that became ERC721 uh, really is where my personal need to standardize and to, to have some level of conformity within an entire space, I would have to say CryptoKitties are definitely some of my, my favorite NFTs that I own.